Welcome back, my friends, to another ranking. And I dropped it, man. Welcome back to another Genshin ranking video. And today's topic is a topic near and dear to my heart. Something I am super passionate about, and that is ships. And the reason why ships are one of my most favorite things in the world? Well, for 23 years, I have been deprived of any romantic affection, and it causes me to force love into any media I consume. So today, I hit my hand. So today is the day we tackled this monstrosity of video, and it's ranking all of the most popular Genshin ships. I already said that, but let's get into it. All right, first ship up. We're, we're coming in hot and heavy. It's Aetherix Lumine. And... If you ship this, I just have questions for you. I don't know which questions they are, but I need them answered. Anyway, S tier. Uh, going on to the, one of the most popular ships in Genshin Impact. I think it might be the most popular, or at least it has the most amount of art. And that is Child X Zhongli. One thing I have to say about this ship is that the fan art of this ship is very creative. I have seen Foul Legacy Child, Ex Zhang Li, and ooh, ooh. <laughs> you guys, uh, where does it come from? In all seriousness though, uh, I don't really ship them that much just cause, I don't know, the only thing they offer for me is that they're both really hot, but for me, a ship just needs to be more than just two hot people being together and so that's why for me I'm not gonna rank them too high I'm gonna keep them at B tier this next one though I have lots of opinions on once again I I could see why you would ship them because you know they're both hot they're both geo Ning Guang really respects the gods and shit and like the adepti but I think this ship is just so fucking boring. Like, wow, the two hot Geo characters getting together. It kind of gives me Katang energy, you know, Katara x Aang. It's, it's so predictable. There's nothing spicy. There's nothing new about their ship, and it's just so boring to me. I, I don't think they would have any chemistry. If anything, I think they're too alike for each other. They would just be a standard couple for me. Like, if they ever did get together, I think it would just be a marriage of convenience and not actual love. I don't know. They're really boring to me. If you ship them, I think you're kind of basic. And also, like, I do understand that people ship them because they think Ning Guang is the reincarnation of Guizhong. I think that's her name. And people theorize Zhongli and Guizhong were lovers in the past, but then Guizhong died and then she was reincarnated into Ning Guang. And you know, I can appreciate that kind of lore, but I I just don't I don't like it. I'm sorry. I I don't like it. Throw it throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. <laughs> I'm done talking about it. Anyway, relating back to Guizhong and Zhang Li I also don't like this ship, mostly because the community that ships this is super fucking annoying, and they always leave comments on my TikTok about this being the best ship, and I'm like, jeez, Guizhong's fucking dead. Like, you wouldn't even have known about Guizhong unless you read into the lore, which is fine. All props to you for reading into the lore and everything, but the she's fucking dead, bro. But I do kind of like it because I love the idea of Zhongli being in therapy. I don't necessarily really ship Zhongli with anyone except for him suffering. That's who I ship him with, is suffering. I don't know, I just, I, I just like the idea of him being in pain and everything. I don't know, I'm a masochist. Also, I'm kind of saving Zhongli for myself because I ship Zhongli with me. So yeah. Um, I'll keep them at a seed here, just because the community annoys me. But next. <laughs> we have Ning Guang and Beidou. This is everything I want in a ship, is two big-breasted beauties that are enemies to lovers. I love them so much together 
Oh, I just love how they're so snarky with each other. I have a headcanon that they fall in love over playing chess. So Ning Guang, she hates Beta, but whenever she's just waiting for shipments to come in from Beto, Beto's ship, she plays chess with her to pass the time. And Ning Guang keeps losing at chess, and she's like, why does this scurvy infected motherfucking pirate keep beating me at chess? Like, this does not make sense to me. She has an IQ of zero. I'm gonna keep playing this bitch until I win. And slowly over time, Ning Guang gets to know Beidou more, and they, they, they fall in love over playing chess, and I think that's really cute. I just really love them. They're both so hot! And I love enemies to lovers, and I love all of the snarky um, conversations they have with each other in-game, and there's just so much tension. Ooh, it's so spicy to me. This is my favorite ship in Genshin Impact. I'm gonna immediately put that shit in S tier. Where are you? S tier. Boom. Oh, also with Lumine and Aether, I'm gonna... I'm going to put that away because I know someone's going to get mad at it. I'm, I'll put it in throw away. I'll put it at the bottom of throw away. Please don't come for me. I have Chong Yoon and Sing Cho. One of my other favorite ships or ship tropes is childhood best friends to lovers because I just think that that is so pure. And I just love the idea of your forever person being the dude that you would like play with on the playground with like I think it's so cute and they're boyfriends and they're dating and they're young and in love and no one can take that away from them I have like another love story crafted in mind is that Chong Yoon like starts dating another girl maybe Shang Ling and and Sing Cho gets really jealous of it <laughs> and um Chong Yoon spends more time with with Xiong Ling because he's in a relationship with her and everything and their relationship slowly comes apart and then for whatever reason Chong Yoon and Xiong Ling break up and then they just have this really dramatic ass fucking fight about Xing Cho being really jealous of Chong Yoon and everything and then at the peak of the fight Chong Yoon gazes into Xing Cho's eyes and he locks a stare into them and he says Every time I kissed Xiang Ling, I wished it was you. And then they kiss. And then they live happily ever after. And I love it. I'm going to put them in A tier, though. Because they're not my most favorite ship. But I do love the story that I that I crafted around them. So, so much angst. So much teenage love. Mm, I love it. But um, there, there are other ships that I like much more than them, but they're definitely up there. <laughs> Another favorite ship of mine, and that is Traveler X Lumine. Oh, bleh. Traveler X Ayaka. Whenever I ship the Traveler with someone, usually what I'm doing is that I'm putting myself in the Traveler's shoes just because I think the Traveler is a self-insert character, so I'll put myself into her shoes so basically i'm shipping myself with ayaka but i adore ayaka i at first didn't really like her too much because i thought she was just kind of boring and also when a character is really hyped up for me when they come out i'm not as hyped for them especially with ayaka because she was hyped way before the game even started and i was just i was like neutral about her but then i did her story quest and then I fell in love with her, mostly because she's desperately in love with me, and I can't help but fall in love with people who are obsessed with me, because I just follow wherever the love is, even if it's not from the greatest places. If you pay attention to me, I will fall in love with you, just like putting that out there. But yeah, I, I love Ayaka. I love how she was a little manipulative when we first saw her, because like she tries to act all... Um, shy and timid. She was really a manipulative bitch behind those beautiful blue eyes. Um, if you kind of like read into the story, uh, she kind of like manipulates you into joining the revolution when the whole time you just wanted to find your brother, but you know, it's fine. I love, I love someone who gaslights me. 
Mwah. Oh, they're, they're, they're S tier for me. I think Beidou and Ningguang are higher up for me, but they're definitely up there. Like, if I could date anyone in the game, it would be Ayaka. She is the one for me. My one true waifu. Alright, and now we got another controversial ship. It is, uh, Lumin X Child. I used to really ship these two together because, um, like I said before, I put myself into the traveler's shoes and I ship myself with Child. And it may or may not be because Child kind of reminds me of Kyo. But once I got over myself, I kind of started to dislike Child a lot because I think he's just a brat. And I also think he's kind of ugly. And also he's ginger, so... Meh. So yeah, I don't really ship them too much anymore, but I, I, I must admit, sometimes I would watch, like, webtoons of their ship together just because I feel like Lumine or, like, I could... I can change him. I can fix him. He, he, he doesn't have to be a psychopath anymore. Like, if I started dating him, he would be totally fine. Like, I could change him. But, like I said, I got over that, and I was like, you can't change anybody. They have to change on their own. They can't. I also hate the trope of, like, the woman dating a man and he becomes a better person. And I kind of was just, like, projecting that onto video game characters. Like, usually what I do is I, like, project my toxic fantasies onto some um, ship. But I kind of got over that. And honestly, I don't really ship them that too much anymore. So I'm going I'm to put them in B tier. Maybe above above Zhongli and child just because I want to pay homage and pay respects to my past love my past love I'm so glad I grew out of that anyway next up we got Barbara X Bennett this is one that I have not seen a lot of art of or just a lot of buzz about but I think it's very underrated and I will tell you why so the reason why I ship these two together is because I think Bennett he's so unlucky he's always getting hurt and he goes to like Barbara's clinic or whatever to get healed or to mend his wounds. And Barbara thinks he's just stupid at first, but then she gets to know him and she sees him as this silly, kind, whimsical boy who's just very unlucky. And she tries to heal him and Bennett heals her insecurities about not being able to live up to the expectations of her sister or trying to or, com, or Barbara comparing herself to her sister all the time and he helps Barbara realize that she is her own legacy by just herself she doesn't have to live up to her sister's expectations or anyone's expectations or just try to be like her sister she can be great all on her own and I love that I love how they will help each other and I think it's very cute and I love that a lot so I knocked something over I'm knocking over everything today so I'm gonna put them in S tier I I really I really like them they're super cute anyway we got Benny's adventure team so this is Bennett Fischl and Razor and I love this pair. I love it a lot. Um, I would add Barbara in there, but I don't know. I feel like that's like too many people. But I, I love this pair or this trio specifically. Um, I don't know if I necessarily ship them as like all couples, but I think their friendship group is just fucking hilarious because they're just a misfit of vagabonds and wanderers and outcasts. And they all found friendship in each other. I ship their friendship more than I ship them all together, but I definitely do think that they all like diddled in each other's business all together. Because that's kind of probably what happens in friendship groups. I don't fucking know. I don't have any friends. But yeah, I, I, I think they're funny. I think they could have a sitcom or like a spinoff special and it would do very well. So I'm gonna put them in A tier. I, I like the idea of them. They're cute. But they, they don't tickle my fancy the way that Barbara and Bennett does. And then we got Ganyu and Kaching. Ah. Ah. The other couple of the Li Wei Chi Xing. I also have a headcanon as well that they're trying, like Beto, Ningguang, and Kaching and Ganyu are trying to hide their relationships from each other, but they do it really badly. And yeah, I think. It's just funny. 
I can imagine like Beidou leaving Ningguang's office and Ganyu leaving Kaching's office and they both, Beidou and Ganyu just lock eyes and they don't have to say anything, but they just know that they diddled with somewhat of the Chi's name. I think that's very funny. I do really like them together. I hate how Mihoyo tried to put that that like big sister relationship in there. I was like, no, 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 no. They're dating. We don't, no, 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 no sister relationship here. No incest here. It's just girlfriends. And I love them. I think that the only problem I have with their relationship, and it's not even like their relationship dynamic, I think that they both just work way too much and they might become like a workaholic couple and never have time for each other. But maybe, I don't know, maybe one of the, or maybe, or maybe like them falling in love makes them realize that life isn't all about work and it's about who you're surrounded by. And maybe they take a vacation together. I don't know. Just, 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 just a thought. So yeah, I like them. I think they're really cute. I definitely ship them, but they're not my favorite ship. But I'll put them in A tier. I adore them. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my favorite head ship in Genshin Impact. Ooh, whew, that is Sarah and Ito. I think their relationship dynamic is so fucking funny. Similar to Beidou and Ningguang, I think that they're enemies to lovers, but this time their story is a little bit different. Uh, you know how Kujo Sara is the one who took away Ito's vision and Ito keeps trying to do a rematch, but Sara is like, fuck off. Chill out, bro. So my headcanon and the way that they fall in love is that Ito keeps trying to do rematches with her and every single time he loses. And he's like, what the hell? She is a four star. I'm a five star. Like, what the hell is this? And uh, he, this is going to sound a little bit creepy, but he like stalks her or he just keeps tabs on her and he's trying to like find her weaknesses and stuff to defeat her. But he becomes really intrigued with her along the way, but he's still trying to fight the feelings of pride. He's like, this bitch beat me. I'm going to beat her. And that's all that matters. And then one day, Kujo Sara catches Ito stalking her. And she's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, you can't just stalk me. Like, if you want to beat me, let's do this fair and square. On this date, you, we will have another rematch. And you can spend your entire day with me to see my the ins and outs of my personality and all my weaknesses and let's see if you can beat me then. Ha. So Ito's like, oh yeah, hell yeah, fair game. Let I'm gonna spend every single day with you and try to learn everything about you so that I can finally defeat you. And slowly but surely they fall in love. And on the day of their rematch, Ito's like, um, I actually don't really care about beating you. I just want to be with you. And then they get married. Ah, I love them. And also, I just realized that I picked an electro mommy and, elect and a geo daddy, and they're both enemies to lovers. You can see a trend with my favorite ships. I love them. They are S tier. They're, they're right behind uh, Beidou and Ningguang, because I have to give it out to the lesbians out there, you know. Mwah. All right, next up, Kujo Sara and Kokomi. I also love the sleeping with the enemy trope, but I can't help but compare it, their relationship, to Ito and Sara's relationship, just because I think that Ito and Sara's dynamic is so funny to me, and I think that Ito could bring out Kujo Sara's, like, funny side and not have her be so stoic and cold all the time. I, I don't know, they're, they're okay for me. I Kokomi and Kujo Sara, like, yeah. yeah, they're both really hot and cute, but I don't know, their, their dynamics just don't really do it for me. I don't really have a, a lot to say about them. I love sleeping with the enemy, but just not this one. So I'm gonna put them in B tier. They'll, they'll stay there. They're fine. All right. <laughs> We have the most heterosexual ship in Genshin Impact, and that is Jean and Deluc. Oh, Jean and Deluc. Ah. I also kind of 
I get why people would ship this one. Um, I do kind of like that dynamic of childhood friends that grow apart and then reconnect later in their adulthood and then realize they're in love with each other. I like that. I understand it. But I don't know. Deluke's just so ugly. I hate him. And I don't think he deserves any happiness. So just for that, I'm going to put it in C tier. I'm sorry, Jean and Deluke shippers. Just, if Deluke wasn't ugly, it might have been a different story. Oof, but now we got, mm, now we got my favorite payer out of that. Oof. Jean and Lisa. When we first saw them in Mondstadt and Lisa walked in into Jean's headquarters, or quarters, I was like, they're fucking... And also, Lisa has a voice line where you say good morning to her and she thinks it's Jean. And I was like, mm, I know you spend some late nights with her. And you were used to saying good morning to your beloved Jean. But I, I like, hate them together as a couple just because of the vibes they give off. They give me PTO mom vibes. And I have no idea why they do. So if they were in real life, I think they would be the toxic soccer moms of the school and everyone hates them. This is like an idea I have of them. They're in a PTO meeting and they're the president and vice president of the PTO and they're they're like the power couple. You know, they do 5 a.m. hikes in the morning and they do couples yoga together and they just seem like this perfect couple and they always like belittle people. They're like, yeah, it must be so hard getting up at 7 a.m. and like make your kids lunches and drive them to school. I understand because, you know, Lisa and I, we, we both get up at 5 a.m. and we just do our meditation walks um, as the sun is rising. And we have to come home and pack our kids like a three course gourmet meal. Yeah, it's just so hard. And they're like, Oh, your kid got into NYU with a full scholarship? <laughs> My kid got into Harvard and has a full ride scholarship and a stipend because Harvard just wanted them so much. They give me such pretentious vibes. I know that there is nothing of that in the game, but just thinking of them in real life, that's the vibes I get from them. Also, I... This ship kind of pains me in the soul because Lisa is slowly dying and Jean's lover is just going to die and how can she ever love again after having such a whirlwind of a romance? She can never love again. And you know, I kind of love that for Jean. I don't know. Jean, Jean's not one of my favorite characters. She's like mid for me. I don't know. I just also love the idea of characters being in pain. I'm a masochist. I love reading pain and misfortune and suffering. But but because of the things that I said earlier, I don't really like them that much. I'm going to put them in C tier. I'm sorry. Jean gets no happiness. Similar to the cheesing, I have like a little scenario, sitcom scenario in my head where Albedo and Lisa leave Kaya and Jean's quarters respectively and they just kind of lock eyes at each other and they just know that they've been sneaking around and having the gay sex and shit. And they're like, oh, oh, you didn't see that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I do really like these two together. I think Albedo can be quite stiff sometimes, but Kaya is just such a little asshole. I think he could bring out the fun sides of Albedo. And I think that there's like a voice line or something, or, or maybe it was a headcanon that Albedo draws Kaya. And I think that's really funny. And Kaya's like, draw me like one of one of your French girls. And Albedo just draws a penis. I like ships where one person takes someone out of their comfort zone, and I feel like this one is it. I really like them together. They're super cute. I quite enjoy the relationship dynamics. And also, Klee could have an uncle. So just for Klee to have a fun, spunky uncle, I'm gonna put them in A tier. I'll put them right there. That seems good. Ugh. Now we have Kaya and Beto. And similarly to Ning Wong and Zhang Li, I'm just like, do y'all have no imagination? 
at all. Y'all really just gonna put the two motherfuckers with eye patches together? Literally makes no sense. I don't know. Also, I feel like that they would get really annoyed with each other. I just, in my head, I think they're too similar and they would just get on each other's nerves. And I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. Not even going to put any more thought into it. No explanation. Throw it away. But this one. Rosaria and Kaya. Oof. Okay, so I saw a TikTok comment where it was like, I like them together because I see a she pegs him dynamic when I see it. And I agree. Men, open up your bussy. It is time for you to accept pegging, okay? I think they're super funny. I can just see them getting drunk together um, at Deluxe Tavern and just causing a mess and them being super fun. And I know Rosaria doesn't fit the Manic Pixie Dream Girl stereotype, but I can kind of just see that for Kaya. He, like, she is his version of a Manic Pixie Dream Girl. And they have this just really cute but really cheesy and cliche John Green coming of age moment and their relationship just goes up into flames. I, I, I like that idea. I, I like that idea a lot. I, you know, at first I was not about, I was not about this shit, but then I came, but then I saw that pegging comment and I was like, mm, yes, I understand. I can get behind this ship. I enjoy it. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put them, um, in, hmm, A tier? Hmm. Mm, mm, yeah, I think Rosaria is the toxic lover that Kaya needed before he, like, finds Obedo, and he learns a lot of lessons from that relationship. It's just a very coming-of-age relationship for them. They're still friends. They just realize they're very toxic for each other. And then Kaya settles down with someone who, who loves him for who he is and doesn't bring out the bad toxic sides out of him. Up next, we have Yai Miko in the Raiden Shogun, or A. Yeah, it would be A, right? I, I love them so much. I love the loyalty. I, I also kind of like the bodyguard to lovers trope as well. I know Yai Miko is not A's bodyguard, but she's her servant, so it's like adjacent. But I, I think they're so cute. I love them so much. I love the Electro girlfriends. Just, oh, every single Electro character is just mommy, you know? Ah, except for Fischl. She's not mommy. She's baby. But I, I, I love them so much. I also am a fiercely loyal person, and I just love the idea of Yai Miko standing by waiting for A to come out, come out of the plane of euthymia and just come back into the real world and reunite their friendship and love. I, I, I'm a fiercely loyal person. I am resistant to change. I am Yaimiko in this situation. I will wait years and years and years for my lover to come back. You know, I gotta respect it. So yeah, for me, they are S tier. I adore them quite much. I'll put them over here. Yes, I'll put them there. All right, now we got Xiao and Aether. Um, I think the people who ship this have have issues because Xiao is just so mean. I think is that is avoidant attachment style. Is that what you could call it? I think the a person who ships this is has a pattern of loving or falling in love with people who are emotionally unavailable and they're just kind of like projecting it onto this game because I feel like Xiao just would not want to be in a relationship at all because he's too busy too busy conquering demons and he be I feel like he also doesn't love himself and he wouldn't accept love from anyone else and it would just be a toxic cycle of you trying to get this man to fall in love with you, but he will go to the, he will die without even having kissed anyone. And you know, I, 
I respect that, and I understand that, but it's just not for me. I'm sorry. I think the ship's really cute, but it's not for me. I, I'm, I'm gonna put in B tier just because I do have some respect for it, but it doesn't tickle my fancy. And last but not least, we have Xiao and Venti. And I know I just said that Xiao would not accept any love from anyone, but I'm changing it for this ship, okay? I think I started shipping them because at, at the end of one trailer, either Xiao, I think it might be Xiao, he's playing the flute and then it come and the camera pans and you can see venti or it might be like the other way around but i i kind of like their dynamic just because i think venti could show him a different way of the world instead of seeing it in such a toxic harsh manner and venti just helps him realize that there's more to life than what he was contracted to do which was to kill demons and shit and help him release all of that pain from all of his colleagues dying and yeah i i like the healing relationships too because i love it when people are fixed and i know i said that about child and lumine but it, this one hits a little different i don't know how to explain it i feel like xiao and venti they kind of just grow together instead of Lumine actively changing child. You know, I feel like Xiao and Venti originally would not have gotten along, but then slowly as they get to know each other more, they they just fall in love. And Xiao realizes through love that there's more to life than just suffering. And they live happily ever after on the back of Dvalin. That is my headcanon for this ship. I do quite like them a lot. And these are one of my least favorite characters too. Like, I despise Venti with a passion. And Xiao for me just doesn't do anything for me. He's just there. But together, together, that is a story. That is a story of love, pain, releasing of bad memories and trauma and turning into a new person together. That is love. Anyway, S tier. S tier. S tier. Anyway, that was my ranking of all of the Genshin ships, or at least the most popular ones. Um, if you have any other ships, um, leave them down for me below and I'll give you my little rating of them. Uh, these were just the ones that came to mind for me since I see them the most often or they're the ones that I ship a lot. So yeah, I couldn't fit all of them in here because that would be a really long video. I can already tell that this video is going to be long, but it would be even longer if I included all of them. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!